I've always thought a blouse can be a dress and vice versa and that is what I'm sharing with you today a blouse pattern turned to dress it's a winter dress and to adapt to the type of fabric I modified the neckline also you can see a little bit of it here so if you're intrigued stay tuned Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a good representation of what I think limitless sewing is, which is basically not being tied up to what the pattern offers or suggests sometimes, and just making little tweaks and adaptations to your style, maybe to adapt the pattern to a different type of fabric. You know, just be free and create whatever you had in mind. You can always doing sewing is super free that way. And you know, it, anything is possible. That's why I mean about no limits, limitless. So I'm showing today a pattern that I've made before. I've made three already. I even have a video all about them on the channel that I made in March. I'll put a thumbnail picture so you can recognize the video and link it up above because I'm not doing a pattern review for this pattern because I don't want to be like doubling up the content. <laughs> so this is the Rhapsody blouse from Love Notions. I love this pattern. It's one of my favorite patterns. I think the, the details on this are super delicate, super feminine. I'm putting the line out here so you can see the neckline has like a little V and then it goes off into a round neckline that is finished with bias binding that you make yourself from the same fabric. There's a yoke with gentle gathers here on the front and the back and then lots and lots of sleeve options. So it's it's a pattern that will you know go a long way in your pattern collection. You can make so many different ways. And I've made the three that I have in chiffon. So on that video I linked to a blog post I wrote for Love Notions with all the tips and tricks for tackling chiffon and getting good results. So it's a really practical blog post if you've missed it and you're always wondering how I sew chiffon, you can find that there. <laughs> anyway, this pattern was suggested to me by my secret sewist. And if you don't know what a secret sewist is, <laughs> it's an event that Tessa, um, Tammy's sister, Tammy is the owner of Love Notions, organized for the Love Notions ambassador team. I've been a member of the team since the beginning of the year. It's a small group of us sewists, um, bloggers, and I think I'm the only vlogger that produces videos. <laughs> so um, it's really nice to be in the groups, really fun. And we got assigned another member of the team to choose fabric for. Now we had to look at their style and sort of be very mindful on what we were choosing for the other team member. And all these fabrics were um, purchased by Tammy, the owner of Love Notion. So it was like a gift. So amazing, super generous. So the team member that got my name got my style to a T. <laughs> I gave a small suggestion of a fabric shop in Brazil to make shipping easier. If someone had purchased fabric for me from the States or anywhere else, I would have been looking at like four to six weeks of shipping time possibly taxes so I gave them a little assistance you know because I'm so far of a fabric shop that where I purchase in Brazil that's really good it's based in the capital of Brazil Brasilia it's called Maximus Tecidos and they sell really good quality fabric I've purchased from them before it was helpful for the person that got my name to see that shop and choose a fabric for me there if I would have seen this fabric in a shop I would have got it for sure there's no way I would have walked home without it so yeah probably my style is very evident the person that got my name assigned she's on Instagram too and I'll share who she is and put her little profile here she goes by so Sophie Lin she got my style to a T and I'm very thankful that she chose this fabric for me because I was super happy to make it she suggested I make this fabric into a Rhapsody blouse. Because I had two meters more than the usual that I work with, I decided to lengthen it into a dress. And now touching the fabric and analyzing it, I realized this is a heavier weight. It's very luxurious feeling. It would be more suitable for a winter type garment. And because also I had enough, I did long sleeves, which I never do. <laughs> Out of all the sleeve options, I chose the bishop sleeves. And now looking at the fabric and the style, I knew that this 
fabric was too heavyweight to look nice with the neckline finished in self bias binding. It wasn't going to look delicate, you know, it might have looked a bit stiff. So I thought, you know, if this fabric is structured, I might as well just change a little bit how it's constructed, not changing the pattern pieces at all. Not changing, just changing the way it's constructed so that it just gives it a different appearance and taking advantage of the structure of the fabric, you know? That's what I mean about limitless sewing. <laughs> so in up close and so personal, you're going to see a variety of sewing aspects, very practical, that could be helpful for your sewing in relation to this project. What you'll see is how I lengthened the blouse into a dress, how I drafted a facing for the front instead of the bias binding, how I sewed that on, understitched it, and also I'm touching on the construction of the back seam that attaches to a yoke to have everything neat and enclosed. So I'm straying a little bit from the pattern construction instructions and order just because I'm adapting this to a different type of look. So that's coming in now. These are the original pattern pieces for the blouse. This is the front. It's got that little neckline there with a V on top in the center and then it goes off to around the neckline super nice detail this there is gathered into the yoke that is actually that top part there this is the yoke that's attached to the back there is also excess there compared to the yoke and there is a center box split that takes care of that excess and gives some ease around the back well i wanted a dress so i just stuck some paper here follow the same curve because the blouse has a curved hem and just added 13 and a half inches that is going to hit me right above the knee with a small hem i'm going to be hemming with bias binding so i'm only going to lose a quarter of an inch of the length there so that is the calculation i made to add that and i just got my ruler and just followed that same curve up here because i want the same effect on the back you can see this little pokey bit there that is appropriate for the top but i sort of folded it over and got rid of that to just have a smoother line and when I lengthened I just tape it out naturally here it's not like I'm flaring out a lot I'm just sort of, sort of following the shape and I'm doing the same thing over there my front piece is actually extended I have two of them together like that and with tape in the middle and that's because I have made this dress out of chiffon and I needed to cut out all the pieces in a single layer and I just left my pattern like that and the hack is simple it doesn't have a tie or bias binding on the neckline it'll just be a nice clean finished neckline really structured and it'll have that V there as a feature I drafted a basing now it's important that the facing doesn't come right up to there because on your main dress this is going to be uh, gathered right there into a yoke so this is going to end up being like that big so this shouldn't be bigger than that. I transferred this to a paper there so I can cut it on the fold and interface it. I drafted this by eyeballing and just to give you some references from there to here is four inches. From that tip there diagonally is about six inches and from the bottom of the V right there down is three. So if you measure that, put some dots and then just draw a curve, you can get something similar and that's what i have right there this is the front of the neckline of the rhapsody blouse here are the seams that attach to the yoke piece at the back and the change i'm making that instead of binding all these like the original pattern is i just drafted a facing for the front now the main front piece there has a wider area that is gathered slightly into the yoke and i don't need that for the facing so i just left the facing plain the important thing is to have this facing not be caught into the sleeve so this can be sort of free because you do you do need that ease there for the bust. So I have my facing attached there onto the seam of the yoke. The yoke is cut twice because it's burritoed, although I will change the method slightly because I'm doing this second yoke, the internal one, as a facing as well. So it's all being hand basted onto the edges of the neckline there, matching these seams that attach to the yoke. They're not shoulder seams as such, um, because this yoke piece comes over to the front slightly. So that's what I'm doing there, and I'm just going to sew this on, and then clip this there so it's a really nice V, 
and finish the neckline there with under stitching and all of that. I'm going to be sewing this neckline facing as such to the main fabric with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm using my quarter inch fort and that will just give me a lot of precision. This is my preferred seam allowance for necklines and it would be the same one that you would have if you were doing the binding as well. Whenever I have an area that's like a little corner, I'd rather finish sewing and then start again and having an intersection of stitching there. You can see the dot there where I'm supposed to pivot on this V. I mark that prior to sewing. On this side where the main fabric is, you can uh, see the V, how it was sewn really nicely and the distance the seam allowance there is quite even, so it's not a crooked V. So I'm quite happy to clip into that and remove all this basting now. I'm going to clip into there right up to the stitch but not through it. And I'll do a little one there too and another one there. So my V is going to be nice and crisp there as you can see. And this turned out pretty good. And now it's difficult to understitch the whole thing, so on the neckline I'll probably be able to understitch up to there and up to there and then start right there again. I'll do the best that I can, but I will understitch the facing to the seam allowance to keep it inside. So I'm going to understitch that little V first. You can see the point right there. I can't sew up to there, but I'll try to get as close as I can. And I'll just put a pin here to keep the seam allowance this side. This is the facing, that's why the seam allowance is pointing towards it. This is where the V is and I'm trying to get all this seam allowance this side towards the facing. Because I clipped it a lot, this can actually extend, the V can sort of extend into a straight seam almost. Okay, so this is the inside, that is the facing that you're looking at right there. And you can see how this little V was understitched and even this part here. When I press it on the right side, it's, it'll be a nice V. The other bit of understitching I need to do is easier because it's just the neckline. So from a point there where I can fit my machine all the way around and stopping there. But before doing that, I'm going to snip into these curves so that I can do this nicely because I haven't done that yet. I've given the neckline a really good press and this is the front there. Here you can see the biggish facing and maybe you can see the V right there if I put my hand behind it. This is the yoke that I cut out of the main fabric that I attached to the back piece and the original pattern has excess here on this area to form a centre back box pleat. I like a, a gathering effect instead to get rid of that extra ease just my preference so so this second yoke that i cut out of this satin charmeuse is supposed to be burritoed in there and if i'd done the original neckline i would have sewn this together with that at the same time and then my seam would be like that but i'm gonna achieve the same thing anyway it's just gonna be really fiddly I'm going to put my hand in there and twist all this around but don't you worry this seam is also going to be enclosed just in a slightly fiddlier way so that it looks really nice and neat as well as having the neckline finished here on the top. So here is my second yoke that I want to achieve that enclosed seam anyway like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold that in 3 8 of an inch because that is the seam allowance that I have sewn onto the other one. I'm going to put my hand through here and try to catch that there like it was sewn in and then flip all this fabric out there and then just grab the end of this yoke there and match it to the edge. 
and then I'm going to continue matching this all the way across. And it's super fiddly, it's going to get super fiddly because I'm basically pulling this inside out all the back seam here of this yoke in order to attach it again and do another seam to enclose this other one. Here is the other extreme of the yoke attached to the back piece and here is the other tip of my second yoke. There, so I have all the seam to do, it's all bunched up in there, but I'm just going to sew that with a 3-8 seam allowance and then flip it and the seam will be enclosed and super neat. So that is the seam right there and now you can just watch the magic happen as you flip it and it's all nice and neat, the seam's nicely enclosed there, there was no need to fold that and hand sew it down at all and on the right side of the dress it will be the same, very neat and the whole neckline is neat already, like the neckline, everything's nice and, and done. Now these, this one matches the arm side right there, so I'm just going to pin those together. This facing is not going to meet the arm side, so it will just reach up to where that seam is, up to there, and then on it will just hang loose there, and then the sleeve will be attached right there. I basically need to sew two side seams and set on a pair of sleeves. I finished the practical video at the stage where I've done the neckline, all the yoke pieces assembled and then basically all I had to do after that was sew two side seams, you know, set in the sleeves and do the hem. These tricky bits around there are a bit fiddly to understitch but so worth going through all that fiddly work to get a facing that's going to be tucked inside really neatly and make the neckline look super professional. So I have the dress right there. You can see how amazing the print is. Maybe you can see the texture of this fabric. It's slightly crinkled. You can see the neckline has the little V there and then it goes around there. And this is where the bias binding would come originally and then finish off there with ties. And this little V would also be finished with bias binding. And I love that finish. I've done it before with my other thinner crepes and chiffons. I think it's a beautiful finish, but having done this in this fabric, it wouldn't have looked right. <laughs> Your bias binding made out of this would have been like this really thick, bulky thing. You know, you have to double fold and then on top of all this, it would have been several layers. It wouldn't have looked nice at all. But I think this way, having that facing inside interfaced with the structure of the fabric, makes the neckline like stand out and that little v there i think is beautiful i love necklines that are different like that so just a few simple changes to make a different look back you can see the yoke piece there that starts there and then from there there is supposed to be a box pleat there but i always prefer to get rid of that volume from there and do a gather instead because there are slight gathers here on the yoke that comes over to the front there so if there's gathers in the front, I like gathers in the back. And this is how I've made all my Rhapsody blouses and now this dress as well. This is the front inside out. You can see the big facing piece go across there and it's attached to the yoke there. Now on the main dress, underneath here, you have this part of the dress gathered into the yoke. You can see the gathers there onto the yoke piece there. And now originally this seam would have been enclosed within the yoke there. But because I was attaching the facing to the yoke, I just sewed on the front to the yoke there normally. So it's just different construction methods because I'm adding a facing, you know. And plus I don't need that seam in there to be enclosed at all because it's all covered by a facing, right? So makes total sense <laughs> and these are things I decide on the go when I'm putting things together I'm thinking yep yep that's how it's gonna go and that is what I enjoy the most about sewing free like this without instructions is that I can go constructing while I'm on the project and I think that's really enjoyable so 
no seam is enclosed in there this facing was attached to the yoke that I turn into a facing as well because the, you know, the yoke is cut twice and because the fabric is bulky I cut this second yoke out of lining fabric to make it less bulky and I think it's a waste of fabric sometimes to cut the yoke twice in the main fabric that's just me because I'm usually working with minimal fabric but it wasn't the reason in this case it was because the fabric was thicker I thought you know this satin chamois is going to feel nice against my skin and it's going to accomplish the same thing that is to have the seam enclosed and knee in there. I mentioned that the facing had to be free here and only attached here on the top to the sleeve because there's gathers here you need to have space for your bust so if you catch the seam up to the sleeve without having the gathers on the facing then you're not going to be able to move and I don't want to have gathers on a facing because then it's just going to be bulky <laughs> so that's why it's just attached up to there. You can see it's attached onto the seam there where the sleeve was sitting and then here from there on it's flapping around free to just fall inside you know the under stitch keeps it inside it's interfaced so it gives the neckline the structure it needs the sleeves are the bishop sleeves and I attached on a little cuff now the original pattern had you fold under the bottom of the hem of the sleeves fold up make a casing and put an elastic in there that is like the traditional bishop sleeve but I don't like elastic at my cuffs I find it uncomfortable <laughs> so I drafted a cuff and put that in there instead and gathered all the excess into the cuff and it looks really nice and cool there the rest of the dress just hangs nicely there's no darts nothing it's just a very nice loose shift style dress you know that's how it turned out and at the bottom I have the hem done with bias binding I sewed on the bias binding and the stitched it and then hemmed it by hand onto the dress you know and as usual I have side seams that are pressed open and surged separately I think it just looks better hangs better and presses better when you do that on the side seams there I rarely sew seams together on dresses like vertical seams I rarely ever press them together unless it's maybe rayon or something really thin you know I have footage of me wearing the dress in Brazil I filmed this right before coming to make my life a bit easier here okay so here is my dress in a full shot it's right above the knee I kept the curve from the original top on the hem there and I really like that it's just a beautiful dress you know, beautiful fabric and this is more of a winter dress for me the fabric is quite thick and I love the sleeves the gathers on the cuff it's just a really nice dress and I'm so happy with it okay up closer maybe you can see the curve of the hem that I really like and of course this is hemmed with bias tape to follow that curve and give that nice shape there on the hem without any packets or anything and I like the length if I wanted to belt this, you know, use a belt, it would bring the hem up too high. Okay, so here is the neckline up closer because I used interfacing on the facing and this fabric is quite thickish crepe, quite structured. This stands up on its own and it creates a really nice like notched. It creates like a really nice notched scoop, you know, with a little V there. I think it's really nice and crisp and beautiful. I love that. The sleeves the sleeves and the shoulders fit me super well and I've got the gathers coming here from the yoke and gathers coming here from the yoke there this is a little cuff I wanted to do as an extra and in hindsight I should have made it maybe half an inch longer because it turned out to be bracelet length like this I don't wear bracelets <laughs> but anyway that's fine Next time I'll just make the arms a little bit longer, you know, my, I've got long, long arms and I should have measured better, although I did measure. Today I wanted to give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You lovely ladies have changed my life. 
Um, it's been such a huge motivation to have you there backing me, supporting me, and I want to give you a big virtual hug <laughs> and all my thanks. Thank you so much to Myra, Jane, Jan, Pauline, Vivian, Wendy, CW, Suzanne Black, Bran, Kat, Liz, Chris, Polly, Joyce, Bonnie, Georgia, Rhonda, Gillian, Crystal, Lorianne Payne, Laura, Meg, Vignette, Francis, Sandra, Christina, Zoe, Carol and Barbara. Thank you so much for joining me. A few were interested in tutorials where I show cuffs and I have a little bonus video for you from this project up on the Patreon page today. So check it out how all this cuff business came to be on this project. So thank you so much for joining me there. If you've never heard of Patreon and you want to see what my Patreon page looks like, you can click on the link down in the description box. There is an introduction video where I sort of share everything about Patreon and also a video on the channel where I introduce the Patreon page. So if you're interested, you can have a look at that. Thank you for joining me today. Happy sewing and I will see you soon next week with another video garment sewing. There's no more holes, I promise. <laughs> Don't you think this is starting to wear?